Uh, my name's uh, Stephen M. Hornby, and I've written a play with Richard Brady called The Box of Tricks. It's a play about the love between two brothers. It's something that's not explored very much other than in really massive dramatic terms. So you kind of, uh, you don't get that much more sort of domestic exploration of just what does that mean and um, what happens to two brothers' understanding of each other. The play does travel through time and the box of tricks is the kind of vehicle through which it travels through time. So we start with the two brothers as young boys, sort of about four and eight, and it becomes apparent that all is not what it should be in terms of the parenting of these two children and an aunt and uncle are sort of stepping in and, and creating um, some parental uh, roles that aren't there and some parental care that isn't there. And of course inevitably then the younger brother ends up um, being parented to some extent by the older brother. And so we see them as young children and then we move through time with um, seeing how that relationship develops to the very near present. And at the same time in the present, we have a narrative that is about one of the brothers being dead and the other brother coming back for that brother's funeral where he receives the box of tricks and then begins to make sense of his younger brother's life. Obviously it's co-written, so there's my experience, I'm an only child, so I don't have the experience of having a brother. Richard does have the experience of having a brother, so he's definitely brought that into the script. Um, and into the original idea, the original premise was his. Um, uh, but I think the, the kind of intensity of that relationship and the heart in which it's both a sort of loving relationship and a competitive relationship um, and has its own sort of dynamic and tests and strains is something that we're exploring in the piece. <laughs> well, it's not really fair for me to pick in Richard's absence, I feel like. <laughs> I think probably one of the strengths of the co-writing is that um, we would both choose different favourite lines. Uh, for me, it's often a turn of phrase where um, you just sort of twist a line of dialogue and something gets a different resonance from it through that. Uh, so one of the ones that sticks in my mind is a line about... Um, Someone, uh, one of the characters says to the other, um, you always needed to give it far more than I needed to take it in terms of the financial support that was offered from one person to another. And the kind of si the, the scene twists on that. I'm sure Richard, if you were here, would choose one of his own lines. <laughs> Quite right too. <laughs> um, I think Richard and I have both had experiences of grief and of losing someone. So naturally that comes to the text and a family's experience of grief and what they go through and then probably more positively of the of the memories and how you reconstruct them and how that becomes a kind of positive thing in terms of moving forward with that and moving through the grief and there's definitely that in the play and so I guess both of us were exploring that about ourselves our own experience of grief to some extent I think in terms of the writing the learning's mostly about co-writing because Richard and I have done a number of creative projects um, when Richard lived in Manchester and it was very easy because he was kind of on the doorstep and we could act in each other's pieces or produce things and we made a couple of short films. Um, but actually when he moved to France during this process we then had to find another way to interact and write using email and Skype and, and kind of finding what worked and what didn't about that. And actually it's still true that the kind of the face-to-face -face stuff works much better. So actually we communicate a lot now through Skype and, and it's very smooth. I think because we already had an existing relationship, it's very easy for that to work. It would probably be more difficult to establish it in that way, um, but that's the main medium we use. Yeah, that's a good question. We've, we've thought a lot about what to do with it. Um, we, we, we're very privileged with the cast that we've been able to attract, so we're delighted with the people that we've got in the cast. Um, but we do have five people in the cast. So, of course, that's a challenge then if you think of funding touring. Um, but we would definitely, you know, want to see it used again. Uh, and we're really interested, you know, characters spring out to you. And there's, uh, I think all of the characters have got an afterlife, but it's not necessarily all in the same piece. So I suspect we will want to develop um, versions of those characters, if not the actual characters in other pieces of writing. 
Um, and playing around, I mean, Richard and I move things quite a lot between film and stage. Um, and obviously they're very different mediums and they require different writing. One's primarily verbal, one's primarily visual. But actually, once you've got a strong set of characters and a good premise, it's really interesting to play with telling that story in different ways. So we may have uh, some, some desire to play around with it on film. Um, and certainly we'd love to see um, the, the play go on and have a life outside of 24-7. Um, we just need to think through how that would work in terms of funding and touring.